What up, this is Patrick Hayes, welcome to my YouTube channel. And in this video, I wanna talk about all the craziness, all of the mayhem, all of the panic that's going on in the world. And what I wanna share with you is some of the techniques that I've been using to process this information, how I'm managing myself, and what my, uh, my intentions are and goals are as we move through this process. And I feel like this could be tremendously helpful for a lot of people out there. Now, the whole gist of what I'm really trying to bring across here today is surrounding this idea of getting in tune with the forces that guide you, getting in tune with those guiding forces that help you see clearly, make the right decisions, and, um, and be balanced in your everyday interactions and your everyday um, observations. Now, what I want to share in this video is some techniques to help bring us back to that, both philosophical and practical like action steps that we can take. And then I also want to talk about some different perspectives that I think are really valuable and useful when um, trying to bring ourselves back into center and, while, and also that are useful in perceiving and making sense of this crazy mayhem that's going on right now. So I'm going to start with a lot of the more philosophical or um, perspective kind of work. And then we're gonna move to a little bit of a meditation technique towards the end where I'm gonna show you how to um, let go of some of the fears and some of the anxieties and some of the unrest that comes from not knowing what's going on or potentially being afraid and how to bring yourself back into that center space so that you can operate from that space because ultimately we all know that we are much more effective, we're much more clear, we're much more um, accurate in our perceptions when we're operating from a balanced place. And ultimately, I think this is the key for all of us right now. And part, part of the reason for that is that as many as there are narratives about what's going on here, there's tons of narratives online where people are speaking as if they concretely know exactly what's going on. This is what's happening here, this is what's happening there. And as we know, these narratives are across the board. There's all sorts of different ones, and I won't get into the specific narratives, but it goes all the way from like worst case scenario to this is nothing and it's even like a hoax or it's fake and just don't even worry about it, it's all gonna go away, right? So, and then everything in between. And one of the things that I think is creating a lot of anxiety in people is the fact that it's really difficult to make sense of what's going on right now. And we have this kind of tendency as humans to want to know what's happening and have a story about what's happening. And um, you know whether that story is like a good story or a bad story, just having a story and having it not be a question mark is um, bring some measure of, uh, of say relaxation or contentment. That's not, those aren't the right words, but it, um, it, it helps people relax a little bit because at least they have a story. When, it's, when there's a question mark and we don't know what's happening, then you know, on the other side of that question mark, any one of our worst fears can kind of pop up as a potential thing that might manifest. And so it creates more anxiety when we don't know what's going on. And so how do we deal with that? Now, one of the things to pay attention to is that you know, there's a lot of people that are speaking right now as if they know exactly what's going on. There's all sorts of narratives on the internet, um, whether it's, you know, governmental or whether it's QAnon or whether it's, you know, just some person that's posting something with their own opinion. People are speaking, a lot of people are speaking as if they know what's going on and they're trying to tell you what's up. And what I want to say is that don't be persuaded by the authoritative tone that people are using regarding all the stuff that's going on in the world right now. I'm not saying that any of these people that are speaking are necessarily wrong. I'm not saying they're right either. But what I'm saying is that it's pretty unlikely that anybody truly knows exactly what's going on. And even if there are particular agendas that are rolling out, that were planned, like dark agendas or, or light agendas or whatever they are that are rolling out, most likely, no agenda is going exactly to plan. Meaning there's, we're at an intersection of a lot of different things. A lot of different, maybe contradictory agendas. We're at the intersection of a lot of um, unknowns. 
where, where of a lot of mistakes, of a lot of misperceptions, and people responding to things based off misperceptions. See, the panic right now, a lot of the panic right now is because people don't actually know what's going on, and then a lot of people are basically jumping behind or jumping onto the bandwagon of a certain idea uh, or a certain narrative of what's going on because they need to believe in something in order to feel safe or because they're, they've been emotionally predisposed to believing the particular narrative that um, they've decided to get behind. And what I mean by that is that as I've been observing from as neutral of a space as I've been able to, what I've noticed is that a lot of different people out there um, are really basically what their beliefs on what's happening have a lot to do with where they were emotionally invested far before any of the information or this scare or this whole thing came out. And an example of that is that the people that are screaming doom and gloom and this is the worst thing possible and you know it's way worse than we thought and everything's going down, it's like really bad. Those are the same people that in every single situation where there is an opportunity to frame a world crisis or a potential world crisis in that same frame, they were pushing that same narrative. They were emotionally predisposed to that story. And it's very clear when I use that example. In other words, like all, you could probably see all of the different people that were probably screaming about Y2K, about every other virus that came out saying that all the FEMA death camps and all those things, you know, all the people that were really f behind that in all those times previously are behind the, the, um, the, the doom and gloom story now. I'm not saying that it's impossible that that could be happening. But what I'm saying is that what I'm observing is that, and this isn't just on the conspiratorial side or like the, you say, negative side. This is on both sides. For the same people that are saying, oh, this is no big deal. It'll just blow over. Those are the people that always respond that way whenever some sort of thing comes up. Oh, this is no big deal. It'll blow over. You know? And the majority of people are really responding to this based off of their emotional predispositions and their kind of like the what they've invested in previously. And so whatever narrative then matches that, they seem to get behind that narrative. And the reason why I'm pointing this out is because this is not a neutral unbiased calculation and analysis of what's going on where people are willing to look at all different sides of things and come to a rational conclusion like a scientific approach. This is people impulsively reacting based off of their emotional predispositions. And as a result, you have a lot of people that are really gung-ho about whatever narrative that they're sharing. But what I want to bring us back to is that in order for us to be most efficient and most effective and be in our own, be sovereign and in our own power, it requires us to notice when we have an emotional compulsion that wants to jump behind something in order to create some sense of security that we know what's going on or in order for it to fit some sort of idea that we are invested in in some way, right? And, and understand that that's an impulse that we have, but that's not something that we should let run away with us. Because by doing that, oftentimes then we jump behind it and we start pushing that narrative, we might actually be disinforming other people or confusing other people. So ideally, the kind of space that we want to be operating from in this kind of a situation is a space of neutrality, of non-biasness, of just observation, very much like meditation. Just sitting calmly, observing what's going on, from a very neutral perspective and just waiting until a p the patterns start becoming obvious to us without overanalyzing things. Just wait until it becomes obvious and not try to superimpose a idea of what we think it might be on top of it based off of old information or off of emotional attachment to different ideas. Because regardless of what's happening, one thing we can probably rest in is that no one actually knows fully what's happening. And regardless of what actually is happening, the best approach to handling this kind of a crisis is to be in our center space, to call upon and be imbued with the forces that guide us. 
And this is something that is beyond rational analysis, counting all the pieces up and then having some strategic idea. I'm not saying that strategy has nothing to do with how we respond to things, but our intuition as a, po as, as our intuition as a part of how to, um, how to enter into the kind of strategy that would be most appropriate is to at first be neutral, unbiased, to remain cautious, but optimistic and just observe things until we really start getting a clear sense of what's really happening and not give too much credence to things that are not our firsthand experience. And in fact, one of the methods that I'm using is, well, I think it's valuable to pay attention to the different narratives that people are saying with a grain of salt without jumping behind it, just to at least, if nothing else, know where the heads at, where other people's heads are at, where we should be making our decisions about what's true or not is from our firsthand experience and then from the firsthand experience of the people that we know and trust and, um, and, and communicate with in a very clear way. So one of the things that I'm doing is I'm paying attention to what am I actually experiencing in my everyday life that I know for a fact. Not am I spinning off on people's posts online of this is some letter that came from some person in this place because I don't know anything about that, right? And the way that I see the media right now is that we all know that the media is looking for clicks. I mean, all of the news stations always want clicks and I don't think that's changed. So it's very likely that a lot of things are blown out of proportion in a lot of ways. And who knows where a lot of these things are starting, right? You know, somebody sees one post and it moves them in some emotional way to start taking action. And so they post it everywhere and then other people see it and then all of a sudden it's posted all over the place. But where did that actually even start? And so before we start taking a bunch of action and changing our emotions based off of some speculation of these things that we've seen online or that people are pushing to us, it's like, what have we actually experienced ourselves? right? I know that I've experienced extreme unrest in the population. I can feel that. In fact, the first few days, it took me a while to be able to discern, okay, wait, this is the collective, this is my own response to it, and this is now how I'm choosing to, to operate. I've also experienced that I know people that have relatives and friends that they've spoken to in other countries that are on lockdown right now. And, but then there's tons of other things that people are saying about different places, the crazy stuff that's happening that I have no direct connection to. Now I'm not saying that's false, but what I'm saying is that I'm keeping it very, I'm not assuming that it's true either, right? I'm just staying very neutral and I'm observing what's happening in my reality. And I'm doing my best to stay in touch with the forces that guide me, to get in touch with the forces that guide me. Because regardless of what's happening, the most powerful thing we can do is be in a clear state. And as I take this more into like the metaphysical realm, there is something that happens when a large group of people start panicking. A chaos ensues in the collective energy field. And from a chaotic kind of episode, you can you think of this in a, in a fractalized version, a simplified version. So think of a one person that's having like an emotional meltdown. And when that person in their life is having an emotional meltdown, there may be actual things going on that are triggering that emotional meltdown. But you see when they lose their cool and they freak out, how they make decisions that cause major disruptions for them and for the people around them in their life. You see how that happens. So if we are collective consciousness right now and we're in the process of a potential meltdown as a collective, emotionally and psychologically, then it's extremely important that people that have the capacity to balance themselves and stay in their center and then operate from the space where they're connected to the forces that guide them with their divine intuition, it's important that these people hold that pillar of groundedness and presence because 
this pillar alone, as you can see, you know, it may be, there may be one person that's staying grounded and 70 other people somehow look to this person or interact with this person in some way. And because they see that groundedness in that person, that may be the one, the one little switch that keeps that person from, the, the other person from losing it, right? Just being able to see groundedness in one person and how one person is handling it. So it's an imperative that we do our duty in remaining balanced and clear and neutral and unbiased and only transmitting the highest quality narrative or, or transmission that we can. In other words, we don't just spout out a bunch of things of this is what I've heard and that's what I've heard as if it's fact, but actually that what is the highest resolution signal that we are getting from our actual experience, from the actual experience from our loved, trusted uh, uh, friends and family and that they've actually experienced. And you know, that line can keep going down as long as it is you know, done the right way. In other words, people are not uploading to the story things that are speculations or fears, but people are actually just expressing what their true experience is and nothing more. So this is how I feel is it's very important for us to exchange information right now. And this is also how I feel it's very important for us to kind of emotionally and psychologically approach this situation. Non-biased, cautious, but optimistic. Cautious, but optimistic. Now the optimism is because when we're cautious, meaning we're not happy-go-lucky, optimistic, doing, you know, being dumb, but we're cautious and we're optimistic, then we can see the opportunities for upgrading this situation, for neutralizing some of the panic, for seeing potential opportunity for us to, um, to, to recognize something valuable that is coming from this situation and then let other people know that that's available for them also. See, one of the things that I highly believe is that anytime something happens, it happens in both polarities. Meaning if there's a major crisis going on where there's a major sickness or outbreak, that means there's a polarity to that happening also, which means there's a major healing going on at the same time. And so this optimism helps us tune in to that aspect of the situation that's going on because there's always two sides to everything from within this realm of duality. So it's important that we tune into that. Now, some of the things that I feel um, are the opportunities that we have right now from this situation are things that um, I think a lot of people are coming to these conclusions themselves also. And this is one that this really helps us, a situation like this can really be a catalyst for us to recognize what our deeper priorities really are. So a situation like this can act in a sense kind of like a near-death experience, where if you've ever had a near-death experience and maybe it was like a car accident or whatever it was, like in that moment where you thought you were gonna die, all of a sudden you realize what's really important. What's really important is the love that you've shared with the people in your life. It's the beauty that you've brought to this world, to share with this world. It's the appreciation of the small things, just even being able to look at the sky or being able to sit underneath a tree. These things are so sacred and beautiful and we take them for granted when we get caught up in all of the superficial aspects of our life. But if we thought that maybe we only had a few minutes left, we probably find ourselves starting to appreciate just the subtlety of just breathing air and you know, having, you know, being able to see a smile on the face of one of our loved ones, right? And so these situations, if we can get past the panicking of, you know, oh no, we might be losing money or the economy's gonna crash or all these other things, and we can tune into what's truly important, then we can start operating from that space and that actually connects us to the forces that guide us. Because when we're operating from that space, we're operating closer to, you could say, like an angelic kind of consciousness. And then in that space, we're harmonizing with the forces that guide us in a, with an angelic kind of grace. So this is really an opportunity for us to be aware of 
and come into our truer priorities, into our greater morals and see what's actually important to us in this world and then treat it with that extra awareness. This is also a really, really powerful time for all of the people, all of you out there, that know that you are a pillar in some way to other people in your life. That know that you anchor a higher vibration that is more stable, that you are a beacon in some way to other people. This is an opportunity for us to take it beyond the hypothetical uh, trials that we may have ran in our head of if you know people are going crazy or if something goes nuts, I will be able to bring down the codes or bring down the right kind of vibrations that will help be a beacon for people that are feeling lost or spun or losing their minds in these moments, that are in pain and that are suffering, that don't know how to respond, right? So this is game time. This is time for us to have to face some of those fears ourselves and over overcome them and then anchor in to the kind of vibration that can stabilize the collective consciousness right now into a harmonious state that can rise to the occasion and overcome this problem with grace and beauty. And the only way that, that can happen is if there's enough people that are anchoring this higher vibration, that are standing strong in that vibration of grace and beauty, non-biasness, not trying to say this is the story or that's the story until it's very clear to us from our own experience and that we can transmit that this is a valuable piece of information that is useful for humanity right now and then share that piece of information. And the only way to be able to see that clearly is to be able to come into a balance space. We need to be able to come into that balance because as you know, if you're freaking out, if you're panicking, I mean, even from a physiological level, all of the blood is squeezed from your viscera and from your brain into your extremities. So your higher sense-making faculties don't work when you're in anxiety or you're in fear. And this is why you perform worse on a test at school if you're really anxious about it. But the more relaxed you are, the more calm you are, the more you can respond to your reality from a balanced place where you're actually able to observe what's actually happening, right? And you're not needing to jump to conclusions to try to create a false sense of security. So what I wanna do now is I wanna share a, a little kind of meditative exercise that you can do. And it's, this is EFT tapping, but I'm gonna give a few different, um, say mantras to use with the EFT tapping that I think are appropriate for the situation that we're in right now. So for anyone that doesn't know what EFT tapping is, it's basically a tapping on your different meridian points to move energy through your meridians. And it's extremely helpful for moving um, blocked energies. So if we're feeling fear or anxiety, um, it can really help move that through the system. And when used in accordance with different mantras, we can recenter our consciousness into a direction that is uh, preferable in these kinds of situations. So I'm gonna show you the different places First, I'm gonna show you the different places where you, um, where you can tap on yourself. And then I'm gonna sit back down and I'm going to start tapping myself and I'm gonna go through some of these mantras that I think are really useful. So, um, this is one of the first places, right at the top of the head. And I like to just use all my fingers because all your fingers are meridian, um, are connected to meridians also. So use the top here. I use the back of my head here and both sides here. That knocked something over. Oh, I did. Yeah, both sides here. Then, hopefully I got that on camera. Then I, um, I do uh, this location here, this location, this right here where it's right on the bone underneath your eyes. Um, I usually go like this at the same time also. Underneath the jaw right here on the throat and right here on the kind of in the solar plexus area underneath the arms like this and here on um, on you can say the inside of your wrists there and then you can do individual fingers like this too but I usually do them all together 
and I leave this finger out. I won't get into why, but I do all of these here and I kind of tap my fingers like that. And then this is a good one too, right? So these are the different ones. And you know, different people say different things about what or, how, what order they should be done in. But I just kind of cycle through them and I found that that's really useful. And then I shake the energy out of my system that I'm trying to move. So with that said, um, you can follow along and, um, and I'm just gonna go here for a, a little bit of time and say a few things just off the top of my head that I feel like might be useful in this situation. So, even though I feel anxiety and unrest regarding the state of the world right now and everybody's fears, I know that the most valuable thing that I can do for myself and for the world is to come back into my balance. And I trust that the guidance that is here to guide me gracefully in this experience is waiting for me in my center. So regardless of everything that's happening, the most important thing to do right now is come into my center. I'm so appreciative that there is an emotional and psychological space that I can enter into that is here to support me. Even though the people around me and the situation is extremely panicked, I know that the most important thing is to come back into my balance. And I know that I can come back into my balance because my balance, my bliss, my center, the center of myself is my natural state. And from my natural state, I am most sovereign and most powerful. And you can use whatever's going on for you. So you can say, even though I'm having a lot of fears and a lot of visions of realities that I am afraid to experience, and it feels like it's pulling my mind uncontrollably into a spiral of fear, I know that the best defense that I have against these things that I fear is to first come back into my balance and that the best thing I can possibly do is center myself and calm myself down because I know that from a balanced vibration I see the reality clearly and I am available for the guidance that will lead me on a path of safety and to a path of transmuting and transforming all of this craziness into something that is fruitful and beautiful. And when I come into that space of balance, I know that that is a viable opportunity for me. When I come into my balance, I see how this can be transmuted and transformed and used as something that is absolutely beautiful and transformational, not just for me, but for the people around me and for the entire planet. And the more that I can come into this graceful flow and feel myself being guided by this grace and operate from within this balance, the more I am transmuting the fear and the chaos of the collective into a beautiful expression that takes us down a timeline that is fruitful 
and beautiful. And you can shake it out if there's stuff that you feel you need to shake out in that process. But essentially that's the process. And you can word it however you want. But coming back into that space is what's needed right now. And it's your natural state. It's your natural grace and flow. So you can go there and you can align with all of the other people around the globe that are holding that anchor. And that octave is being stabilized on a higher level. So when you start tuning into it, you can lock into that. And then you can ride this higher harmonic wave that acts like the stabilizing nodes and the stabilizing factors for the chaos and then beckons the chaos to upgrade to a higher octave. So thanks so much for tuning in. This is Patrick Hayes. Be well, and I'll talk to you next time. One love.